I want to continue our conversation on preparation. Um, I think that there are three things that I end up teaching over and over, and you can see some of this in the Creativation book and, and read more about it. But I teach you that um, you will never be more creative than you are observant. Um, if you're going to change something, you have to notice it first. If you're going to change something, um, you have to have it bug you first. If you're going to innovate in an area, you have to know it, see it, and be a part of it first. So the, the first thing I would tell you is you have to observe. And, you know, there are a number of ways that you can practice observation. Um, you can look at something, close your eyes, and then try and list all the pieces of what you just saw. I do not suggest doing that when you're, um, when you're flying on approach into the airport or when you're driving, especially in traffic, as you'll endanger the lives of other people. Um, if all you do is remove yourself from the gene pool, ah, that may be a favor to a lot of people. Okay. But you find places where you can look at what you're looking at, close your eyes, and then say, okay, what did I see? Um, there's another thing where you just sit down and you journal every night and you make yourself go back and see three or four things that you saw during the day. Um, and one of the best things that I can tell you in order to use your journal in order to be a better observer is just to describe something. You know, maybe you saw a tree uh, that was first budding out in the spring and it had blossoms. You should describe that and describe it as intimately and as, and as distinctly and as precisely as you can. Um, maybe you were watching the same tree in the fall and it had hit a brilliant red. And, um, and maybe you think, wow, I don't know why trees hit a red. Is it something to do with the sugar content in the leaves or the temperature or what makes that happen? And you write out, you journal your observation on that. <clears throat> so, you know, have some fun. Um, do some fun stuff, but learn to observe. Uh, the second thing after you observe is to clarify and study. And um, I have to tell you that for me personally, um, getting better at preparation, this was probably my hardest area. I had, uh, um, I, you know, I knew I was really creative when I was younger, and somebody would say something, I'd say, great, I'm going to go work on that. And, and they would say, what is he working on? Where did he go? What was that about? And uh, somebody would say, man, we need to solve this problem. And I would say, absolutely. I'd be on it, and I'd be knocking it out, and I'd be a genius, but I wouldn't be answering the right question. I wouldn't be solving the right problem. And so I just want to re remind you, um, you need to clarify. Uh, and that means uh, if you're talking to somebody, you say, this is what I thought I heard you say. Did I hear you say this? Um, when, when, I, when I hear this, how much of that did I get right? Um, and there's a, there's a great test if you're clarifying with somebody in communication you say it, and then they say, no, not quite, and then they say it again, and you repeat it until they say, that's exactly what I said. Then you know that you've clarified and you got it. Sometimes you have to study, um, and let's go back to why do leaves change. Um, you know, there's something that happens when cold weather is coming, and the tree is pulling sap back down into the base, and it's no longer doing photosynthesis, and it's not using carbon dioxide and doing all of that to create new leaf material. And while it's pulling away from that, some leaves just turn brown. Those are oaks, so you live in Texas or Oklahoma. But in other parts of the world where there's cold weather and there's other pieces, they do astonishing colors. You have to study why. And when you study it, it really makes them a little more beautiful. But you clarify, you study, and, and uh, the last part of preparation is to have a bit of wonder about you. Um, I am uh, shocked and saddened a little bit because some of my students come into class and, you know, they see astonishing 
creativity and productions in a movie and they go, I'm a consumer. I don't think I like that. I'm not certain that that really touched me deeply. And I'm thinking, holy crap, Batman, do you have any idea how they pull that off? I mean, think about what it took for them to do that on the movie screen. Think about what it took for them to put that into a musical and put it on a stage and create that effect. Think of what that artist went through in order to render that onto a canvas. How amazing is that? And the more you wonder, the more you think about how they did it. The more you wonder, the more that you step into the mindset of the people creating with a bit of magic how they did something new and how you might therefore do something similar or something better. So, you're preparing all the time. It's just a matter of how well you're preparing. How well am I working out? How well am I studying? How well am I clarifying? How well am I observing what's going on around me? And, and how much wonder do I approach what I'm looking at and thinking about? How much wonder do I use to look at it and to see it and to think about it in order to prepare to do something myself? You're preparing all the time. How well are you preparing? Well, maybe you can prepare better. <laughs>